everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and I am here to do a little bit of animation for you here at Lightbox um, on some really great software, Procreate. The people at Procreate came to me and said, hey, would you do a little bit of character animation? And any excuse I get to animate a character stuff, especially my new character that I'm animating now, Snow Bear, uh, I'm going to jump at the, uh, at the chance. And so um, I'm going to animate on Procreate. I want to show you how easy it is. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. Um, you can see I've got my gallery right here. And I'm, just, I'm going to start a new document. I'm going to do it, go ahead and do it at 4K. Let's do it right there because I like, I like the proportion. It's long. And I'm going to be doing some broad animation. I want to do my character Snow Bear, like I said. And I'm going to have the bear kind of jumping around. I, I love doing broad animation, especially when I'm doing demonstrations, so you can really get a sense of the movement and the timing and all that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to go ahead. I've already got my brush that I'm going to be using. If you're animating uh, and you want to follow along, just find the most comfortable drawing brush that you like and just use that. Uh, the one I'm using here is from my own uh, set of brushes that I've created, um, and you can get those at CreatureArtTeacher.com. And it's my original uh, custom set of brushes, and within that set, it's my Pastel C brush, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just blow this up uh, for myself real quick. Actually, I'm just going to start here, and I just want to get a relative size of my character. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I've, I've got an imaginary ground plane about two-thirds of the way up, and I'm going to have him kind of running around like he's just jumping and having fun, maybe chasing a mouse or something around. And I'm going to imagine that ground plane right there. And I want to get his size, oh, about this big, about like this. So I'm going to blow this up. What I do each time is uh, i, I got to get my size, but I can't draw that small. So one of the great things is, is we can blow things up. So I'm going to have a little snow bear looking off. Just got a little three-quarter screen right. I'm just going to just quickly sketch him in. And I'm going to keep his eyes really simple for the sake of this exercise. They're just going to be little dark spots. There we go. And I, when I'm drawing my, my four-legged characters, I think of them and broken up into kind of six different parts. We've got the head, and we've got the neck, and then we've got the shoulders and the, and the arms, front legs. So here I've got them kind of stepping forward a little bit. And you're going to see, the other thing when I animate is I, I tend to keep things somewhat loose. So I'll be a little scribbly here, you'll see. But I also try to be accurate. Even though I'm trying to be a little bit looser, I'm trying to be accurate as well. I'm thinking about that neck meat, you know, the muscle in his neck bunching up. And then so I've, so I've got the head, the neck, the shoulders, the front legs. And we've got the torso, or the belly and the chest and all that. And we got the hips, and back legs, and then the tail. Now obviously on a bear we're not going to see the tail, at least not from this angle. Now, one thing I forgot to do, and we're not going to see the other leg. We might see the other foot right there. One thing I forgot to do is I've got to come up here, and I want it to be animation. So I've, I, I've got to go into my uh, uh, tools area and go into animation assist. Click on it there, and now we're all set to go. All right, so here's my first drawing for our animated piece. Just like that. Now, I want him to kind of just jump around. Okay, so... Shrink them up a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and add a frame. So I've got my onion skin on, meaning it's going to show me the drawing that I just did on my new drawing. So I can go ahead and draw, but I'm show, it's showing me my, my old drawing, and I can uh, uh, 
flip back and forth between the two. So what I'm going to do now is what I need him to do, you know, if he's going to start to jump, he's going to anticipate that jump. Meaning you can't just stand still and jump up in the air. What do you have to do? You have to go down before you can go up. You have to go down and gather that energy to go up. Okay? And so that's what he's going to do here. So I'm going to bring him down. Just like so. Bring that nose. I'm going to bring his nose down. Now, I've got about an hour to show you guys, and we'll see how much we can get done in an hour. But as you know, animation is not the, uh, it's the marathon for sure. But I think we can get a, a pretty good chunk of animation done in an hour. So we're seeing a little bit more of the top of his head because he's coming down. His ears are coming back. You know, if I scrub back and forth, see that head come down. We're going to see more of his neck. The neck comes down right here. And the shoulders are going, to, are going to come down as well because what's going to happen? He's going to come down and he's going to bend his elbows out to get ready for that push-off. He's going to bend the elbow out here to get ready for that push-off. Now, we're not all the way down yet. We're just a little bit down. And then the other thing, too, is I like to counter that anticipation in the front by bringing his back end up in the back. So you'll see he's coming down, and then we'll straighten that leg up a little bit in the back. Even bring the ankle up just a touch. See that? Now, once again, I'm keeping this loose. I'm blow that up even more. You can see it a little better. Now, when I blow it up, you can see it's fairly loose. There. Oops. Okay, there we go. So let's flip back and forth on that. You can see. Now let's go to the next drawing. I'm going to add a frame. Now I think I have this set for three, uh, three drawings in the onion skin. I'm going to bring it, keep his head down. He's starting to come forward. I'm going to start to bring his nose up a little bit. Still smiling. He's always got a smile on his face. This is our bear. He's a polar bear. Okay, so you see he's starting to come forward. You can see that head. See that? All right, so we're going to drag those ears in this direction. Get those cheeks in there. All right, I'm bringing this neck down even further and really bringing the shoulders down now. So now, really pushing forward. And I, and I, I really want to push those arms to the side because... If you push him back, backwards, bend him backwards, you're not going to see the change as much. So I want to see them kind of push out to the side so I can see that change. Okay, like so. <clears throat> Once again, I'm going to bring that butt up in the air. All right, so there we go. Let me go into settings and uh, 
turn that onion skin off just real quick so we can see. When you turn the onion skin off, you can see the, the movement a lot better. I'm missing, bring that onion skin back up a little bit. So what I've done is I've, I've changed the onion skin so you can see the animation a little better. And any of the frames that are behind your primary frame are going to be red. Any frames in front are going to be green. So that's why you're going to see it flash back and forth between red and green. But we're starting to get some good movement here. So there's our big anticipation. Now, what's he going to have to do? He's got to push off, right? I want him to push off. So go, let's go to our next frame. I'm going to have him push. Right here. I'm going to put that nose up in the air. There we go. Here's those shoulders. Once again, thinking about those different parts. Okay. Push here. Actually, I want to get the shoulder, the top of the shoulders up there. Whoops. Clean that up just a little bit. in here and we'll come in here and I like to keep the, the shapes really simple especially for something like this okay so if I flip back and forth see that push that's the first initial push in the rear end I'm going to change the uh, on my settings I'm going to do uh, the number of onion skin frames I'm going to drop, drop it down to two so we don't get too many piled up on top of each other. Now here's where we drop, start dropping the butt down. If I come back to the original drawing, there's a foot over there. There. The other foot should be around in here. Now the other thing you want to be careful of too is volume. Here this drawing is getting a little bit small. So I'm going to come up here to my arrow and I'm just going to push that size a little bit. Always be aware of your volumes. If you look at that original drawing, and he's coming forward a little bit, so I want him to be a little bit bigger. Actually, we can make him a little smaller. Okay. Let's go to our next drawing. I'm going to bring him way up. So once again, I'm going to get that nose way up here. Thinking about the angle on that head, keeping it loose. Okay, see him coming up. So here, I want to. I'm just going to sketch in the whole body real quick. I want to get that butt down, and his whole body is kind of this teardrop shape. I want to make sure I'm getting that. Okay, if we go back to the original 
drawing, I want to make sure I'm keeping the size consistent as well. See that? And then here, I'm going to look at that arm. I come way down like that. He's really pushed off. Same with this arm. Okay. Here's where we're going to get kind of a stretch in the body. And just a little bit more squash. In the butt on the back end. There's that foot. That back foot here. I got a knee right there. And here's the other foot kind of tucked in underneath everything. You're not really going to see the other knee. So as I scrub through, See that jump, push, push right off there. So now, let's add a frame. Now he's going to push off up into the air with his back legs. So here I want to get him up. I'm going to get him up in the air, and now we're going to get those shoulders up. The head starts to come down a little bit. As of right now, I'm not really thinking about timing. Um, I'm just thinking about the movement. I can worry about the timing later. I just want to make sure that I'm hitting the key poses within the movement. In this case, I'm jumping up in the air. I want to hit some key extreme drawings. And like it, once again, I'm, I'm keeping it loose. I'm not worried about beautiful pristine drawings at this point so here he is jumping up in the air there's the shoulders shoulders come in I am thinking about anatomy I'm gonna start bringing those arms up like so and I'm just gonna treat the paws like mittens at this point I'm not going to get all the toes in and all that. I don't have to worry about that right now. There, see that? As I scroll, you can see him jump up. Now we're going to get a nice stretch here. This is going to look weird. I like to really go for the stretch. So I'm still going to have those feet almost on the ground. It's going to look funny. But you'll see in the next drawing, we'll get a nice snap back. That foot just coming off the ground there. And here, I'm drawing this guy, and the foot is having just left the ground here. See there? <clears throat> really stretched out. So if I scrub, I'm 
right there. Now we got to get that arc reversed. Now that he's going up in the air. We got to get that arc to reverse. You can see it's starting to rever reverse at the neck, head and neck, but you got to get it to reverse at the rest of the body. Let's go ahead and add a frame. Here I'm going to slow him down a little bit. I'm going to bring that, start to bring the head down. And a lot of people ask, you know, when they're starting to learn animation, for some of you animation students out there, you know, what, you'll know that one of the first exercises you learn is the bouncing ball. And you learn about the timing of the bouncing ball and how it squashes and stretches. And but I've heard so many students go, yeah, but it's just a bouncing ball. When am I ever going to use that? Well, as we animate this, this uh, bear, he's demonstrating all of the attributes of the bouncing ball test. It's just more complex because of all the different shapes. Well, let's see, bring the ear out here. I want to bring that, I want to find that line of action right up into the shoulders. The shoulders are going to be the high point now. And here I'm going to tuck those arms up. Look at that, see? Actually, I'm going to pull him way out here. Have some fun with it. Let's get really broad with it. Get that big gut coming down. There. Clean that up just a little bit. And here I'm gonna I'm gonna let this other leg stretch down a little further. Like the, the the leg closest to is kind of popped up quicker. Then the other paw I'm going to bring right over here. Right on the other side of the face. There you go, look at that, big boom, big leap. Just like that. Let's go ahead and add a frame. So as I do this, uh, I want to remind you guys that I've got a whole bunch of courses available on my site at creatureartteacher.com. I've got Courses on animation, animal drawing, procreate, all kinds of stuff. And uh, really a lot of fun. I put a lot of work into, into them uh, to make sure they're really understandable and easy to follow. So go to creatureartteacher.com and check it out. And I just want to mention too, along with those, you know, those courses, so a lot of them are on special right now, special sale because of Lightbox. So go ahead to creatureartteacher.com slash Lightbox and you can get some really great deals. So once again, I'm bringing that, I'm going to bring that shoulder down. Now, now it's the butt. That back end is up in the air further. I'm going to have him start to reach with those, those, those shoulders and the forearms. There. That's a big jump.
Now he's getting those legs up in the air. Tucking them up. See there? Between the two. The legs are starting to come forward. There. Just like that. Now, I love doing this animation, this kind of animation as a demonstration because you really get to see the whole idea of what it is to animate. You know, that that really a lot of fun squash and stretch and playing with timing. One thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to adjust this drawing now that I've flipped it a few times. If you look at those front arms, I want those to really be stretching, reaching. I'm going to adjust that. It's one of the things about, you know, that I love about this program is being able to flip back and forth right on the fly. I can determine you know, what I'm going to need. I want to have a nice straight. A nice straight going right into the that arm. There. See, that goes right into that arc. Got a nice arc right there. See, now it feels like he's getting ready for that impact. Getting ready, jump. Just like that. Let's add a frame. Here, if we go all the way back to where he started, there's his ground plane. I'm going to get that ground plane right about in here. He's making that contact with the ground. You know, when I first started animation, you know, other than the bouncing ball, we had to do the flower sack test, which is basically taking a flower sack shaped character, you know, something like this, literally a, flack of, a, a sack of flour, a flack of sour, <laughs> a sack of flour that looks like this. Yay, flower. Like that. And you create characters, you know, by, by the poses that they're in. And uh, you can create characters with them and you can get them to move around. And the whole idea behind that is to get attitude in your drawings to, to get across uh, mood and emotion rather than just trying to uh, rely on expression. And one of the things you do with that flower sack is after the bouncing ball, is you get them to jump around and run around and chase each other and all that kind of stuff. And this is very much like the flower sack test. So now I'm using the character. So this is one last drawing here where he's, his arms are outstretched, but now they're on the ground. See that? Here. On the ground. Just like that. Still keeping it very simple. Again, I'm not worried about timing at this point. I just want to make sure I'm hitting all of the poses that I need to hit. There, see how that butt's coming down? And he's reaching. Big jump right there. <clears throat> so here, I'm going to really bunch up that leg. The thigh is really bunched up there. And we're actually seeing it on the other side too. Like that. See that? 
But the, now, though, is he's starting to bring from the knee down to you know, the calf area, that's starting to come forward. Maybe we get a little piece of the foot on that side. Notice also, I should have mentioned this earlier, arcs. Really pay attention to your arcs. We have to get smooth arcs through the animation, especially with this kind of motion, in order for it to be convincing. So now we're going to start the squash. Okay, so, and I want him to change direction. A little bit. I'm going to have him jump more towards camera. So here, we're going to bring that head down. It's going to come in here. We're going to go ahead and start start to have him change direction. I don't want to do it too fast. The physics wouldn't feel right. Get that expression just a little scribbly head the ears are going to kind of flop down now because of the impact the neck is over here starting to change direction a little bit Shoulders are going to come in here. I want to bring those elbows out a little bit. So you can feel that impact. See that straight arm there? Here's the, here's the elbow there. Well, let's bring that elbow out here. feet are going to be planted. The elbows have to move. See that? Feel that push, 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 push. So now I'm bringing this butt down. And now I'm going to extend. That's coming down in the body there. The body there. I'm going to bring the feet straight down. And a foot like this. There we go, just like that. Okay. They're getting ready to plant. Just like so. Now let me shrink this up a little bit. We'll just play it back. You can start to see the timing's not right, but you can at least see the action of our, of our movement. And we can see the arcs working. All right, so let's go ahead and add a new frame. And he's going to jump towards us. I'm going to have him still. Coming down, well not coming down, but he'll start to, actually I'm going to change that a little bit. I am going to, because I want to have him, there we go, I want to have that head still kind of taking the impact and changing direction. There we go. Move this up a little bit. Feel those ears coming down. A 
flip back and forth in the habit of flipping. You want to see that movement. There. There, see that? Those elbows, those elbows flaring out. Same here, I'm going to get that elbow flared out right about there. See that pushing, pushing the elbows. There's the other foot right there. I'm going to drag it over just a, just a touch. There's a foot hitting the ground right there, the back foot. The other back foot's going to be behind where we can't see. There. Just like that. He's coming towards us, so we're going to get a little pile up on the on the silhouette. Everything's going to be in front of everything else, but we'll get through that. Let's go ahead and add a frame. So let's push him off, push him up in the air now. Just like so. I'm going to keep that head nose dragging a little bit. We'll get a couple of leaps in here. You get a sense of the timing and how we do it. The movement. And you can try it on your own. And procreate. It's really one of the things I love is being able to use your own brushes you know, in this program, and it works so well. And drag those ears again. Okay. Now the neck is changing direction. Coming up towards us, right? Shoulders. Pushing off, just like that. <clears throat> There's one arm. So we're going to push off with this arm. There. So we got that front end working, right? See there? Push, 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 push. Now we got to get that back end to squash. And bring that belly down. There. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna see the squash on the other leg, but we will see it on this leg right here in the back. See there? Squash. Now, let's add a drawing. First, let's let's look at what we've done so far. So he's kind of leaping forward, leaping towards us. Just like we did before, 
Now we're going to start getting some more stretch drawings. Changing the angle of the head slightly. He's looking up now. Now I'm going to let that mouth drag a little bit so it'll be a little bit more open. There we go. So let's get that stretch again. I'm going to bring those shoulders around just like that. That comes down into the elbow. Pushes off. Boof. Just like that. Same here. So here we're going to bring this down. Here's the, the back end down here. The body is starting to come up. I think there's still squash on the on that knee. See there? I'm going to bring this back. The other foot would be right about here. You'll be amazed at how distorted you can get in your drawings. That's one thing I see in, in animators just starting out. They're afraid to really distort their drawings. As long as you're moving through them fast enough and you're staying within your arcs, you can really distort your drawings and distort your drawings and they'll become much more, the animation will become much more dynamic and fluid as well. We hit play on this just so you can see the timing isn't right. Once again, we're going to so we go in and slow some of that timing down, but you can see that, you know, even that even quick timing, the arcs are working and you can start to really see that animation. Flipping back and forth, you can see, boom, boom, coming back. That's out of frame. Bring the head up. There we go. I'm going to keep that nose up in the air. The bridge is up high. Get those expressions in real quick. Once again, if you go to creatureartteacher.com, I've got whole courses on how to do all of this, including in Procreate. Animation, I've got courses on animation, uh, working in Procreate and animating in Procreate. And I've also got animal drawing courses, all kinds of stuff. So let's, I'm going to get those shoulders, let them to, uh, catch up. I want to get that nice stretch now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna push him. I'm gonna arc it a little differently this time. I'm just gonna just barely get a little bit of an arc that way. There's our body shape right there. See that? See how that boom pops right up. Boom. Boom. Push those arms. There we 
There we go. And imagine those shoulders coming around, right around the body. And I want to make sure that they're not twinning, that the arms aren't exactly the same. So I get them a little bit different. They're coming in towards each other. I'm, I'm always parallel, uh, par uh, conscious of getting parallel lines and things like that. I don't really want parallel lines. I don't want the arms to be parallel or it becomes a boring, boring uh, image. Twinning. And here... Look at that stretch. <clears throat> Here we go. So get that leg to wrap around. There. Oh, push. Just like that. It looks weird, but it works. Let's get to the next frame because there, that's where everything catches up and it starts to look a little bit normal. Watching our arcs, be careful of your arc. We start to bring that nose down. There we go. Oops, don't like that. Yucky eye. There we go. You know, the folks at Procreate have really done such a great job in creating this software. It's such, it's pretty intuitive, first of all, especially as an experienced animator. Um, but it's it's just so... I love how the, the the drawing feels on the glass and just it, it all works so well. And once again, that instant playback, that's what I've, I've come to love about, you know, hand drawn animation done digitally is being able to get that instant satisfaction of playback, which is, you know, back in the old days when I was working on the Lion King and Beauty and the Beast, we had to do everything on paper. And so you didn't get that instant playback. We had to, you know, hope it was looking okay, and then you shoot it and make your adjustments accordingly. And we would, it would take, it might take, you know, an hour, maybe sometimes two hours to shoot a, a scene, you know, on videotape. Whereas here, we're getting it right away. And I just love that. There we go. So here, I want to get that body it's kind of snapped. It's not so stretched anymore. It's a bit more normal. Right there, see? Oof. Pop. 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 Up right there. So we get those hips up. Just like that. Those knees here. There. So now we got a little bit more of a normal shape to the body now. Oop, pop. See that stretch? 
push and then pop up in the air. So if we play this, so you can see that, you can feel that push. Let's blow this up a little bit. I'm definitely going to have him come forward and land right in front of where he started, and then have him settle, I think. Just get something a little bit dynamic. Then we'll go ahead and play with some of the timing. So we're going to get him to land now. If we scrub back and forth, you can see that jump there, land, jump there. It's out of frame. Start bringing him down. So the nose is going to come down. You can see how much it's it's going to drop. So we've been working on snow bear for quite a while now. Off and on over the last three or four years, we finally got a really good stretch that I've, I've been able to work on it for quite a while, and we're really happy having a good time with it. We're really excited to be able to share it with you guys in the coming months. If you tune into our live streams, you'll catch us over the next few months working on it. We'll be doing, you know, sharing the process with you. One of our other great things that we're really excited about on this is that we're going to be uh, once we complete the entire short, which will be about eight minutes long, we're going to be turning it into an entire course on how to create your own animated short. So here we got, I'm going to bring the, those shoulders around, and those arms are starting to reach forward. like that. There's the elbow into the wrist right there. Just like that. Up and over. See there? Starting to reach forward. Here, I'm going to bring that pelvis forward, which means the knees are going to come forward. Always, especially on bears, I always think of those back calf, the calf area, because they walk like we do <clears throat> on their heel. And I think of that as just kind of a tube, you know, the rough, the rough shape of it. It makes it easy to kind of draw it in, like so. And then let's get that arc. I want the body to follow the arc that we're creating. And then there's the other foot back there. All right. See that big spring forward. Bing. Just like so. Let's go ahead and add a frame. There, so head's coming, head's coming down. Get rid of some of that. There we go. Ears dragging. There we go. Get those shoulders right here. Let 
Once again, we're going to reach. In fact, they're going to really squash the cheeks. We'll squash them even more. One more long stretch before we land. I love getting these really nice dynamic straights right here. There we go. There, look at that. Tip play on that. Boom, boom, boom. Really get a sense of that back and forth. Right now he's kind of overlapping where we start, but he's in front of where we started. If we pause it, he should be a fair amount bigger here than he was here. And he's a little bit. He's grown a little bit. Matter of fact, we can probably get him to grow ooh, a touch more there. We'll go back a drawing and have him grow a touch there. Go back one more drawing and have him grow just a little bit right there. There we go. Back and forth. I, I thought I was going to use more of the uh, <clears throat> of the document over on the right, but decided with the jump back, um, we're only using about half of it. That's okay. All right, so let's jump to the end here. It's out of frame. Oh, I'm on my eraser. There we go. So here he's taking a little bit of impact, so I'm going to Slow the head down just a touch. We're getting down towards the bottom of the frame, so I want to make sure we don't go out. There we go. So there's our little head coming down, our neck here, shoulder blades. Those shoulders are right there. And on bears, polar bears, grizzly bears, they're really pronounced. There's lots of muscle there. You know, muscle is there for uprooting trees and rocks and all kinds of stuff. So once again, I want to get that straight down, but now he's landed. The bear has landed. They tend to, you know, their hands tend to point in a little bit. You'll notice when I do this, and I'm going very simple in the shapes. Right there.
there's the pelvis, the hip area right here, which is going to be the start of our knee or leg. There's a foot coming down, and a foot coming down right there. I love getting these broad, awkward poses. <laughs> so once again, look at the look at the arc. See the arc there? It flows right in. Each drawing should flow right into the neck. See how they just flow? It's almost like water. You want everything to be really fluid and just flow right into the next drawing. Feel that right there, especially that change. You can feel the impact and then the push. Those are the things you want to push right there. There we go. Just going to add a frame. Just bring that head down. There we go. Looking towards us now. See that? Oh, changing his direction a little bit. Those ears are going to flop down. Cheeks will flop down a little bit. There's that neck coming down. There's that arm taking the impact there. The arm taking the impact there. There we go. We're going to get those legs nice and straight into their landing area, just like that. I won't even see the one on the left. Boom. Now what I want to do is I want to hit a final pose. So I'm going to get him right up here. Right about here, I think. We're just going to sketch this in really fast. Like so. There's the head. Now I'm going to get the front feet. Actually, I'm going to blow that up a little bit. There is one foot. There's the other. We're going to in between into that this last pose. Make sure I'm in the right perspective. Let me just play this. Let me get that to pause right at the last drawing. Yeah, I'm going to push that perspective just a little bit so our, our, we're a little bit more slanted on the uh, on the, on the ground plane. So what I what all that means I have to do is just pull his back end up a little bit. Get 
the other foot right in there somewhere. There we go. There. So here, I want to work into that. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to add a frame in between. All I did was go back to the drawing previous, add and hit add frame, and I can in between, looking at the green and the red, I can do my in between drawing. So as his head comes up, I'm thinking about the arc that it's going to take to get into the whoops, that's not what I want, right there. I want to move them over. I want it to arc into that spot. There we go. There we go. I'm going to reverse those ears even. There. Now what I want to see is him coming up like so. See that pops right into the final pose? Now coming down here, I want that butt to squash down. I'm going to go all the way back to the butt. And here I'm going to have his neck Coming in here. Shoulders are in here. Whoops. Just like that. I'm going to have him start to lift his arm, his front, uh, the screen right front arm start to come off the ground. Like that. There, see that? He's going to be stepping forward with that arm. We'll have him come in like so. And the other foot right over there. This looks weird, but if I scroll, you'll see it really flows right, right from our previous drawings. And it's going to pop into our last drawing. All right, so we want to keep in betweening into that last drawing. So once again, I'm going to go back to my previous drawing, which is this one, say add frame. Now I'm ready to add another frame in between. Bring it up. So let those cheeks drag a little bit. Thinking about, and we let those ears drag a little bit. You want to think about physics a little, and then exaggerate it a little. See, that head is even still moving in an arc. The head is still moving in an arc. So here, we bring this, we'll see where we are with the neck. In here. Sometimes all your lines, even though the, the, the one's green and one's red, it still can get a bit confusing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to uh, my settings and I'm going to drop the, the onion skin to one frame. Now that I'm, now I'll just see the, the back and front and it gets a little bit easier to see. 
So here, I want to bring that arm up. Coming towards us, see? That foot's coming forward. And I want a nice, long, straight here. But we're going to go into the shoulders. Before I pick up right here. Okay, see that? And once again, I'm going to I'm going to squash just a little bit more the back end. You can start to see the, the foot back there, the back foot. Okay. So, stepping forward, those are the mechanics. Go ahead, back to our one frame back, add frame. We're doing another in between, right up into the head. We're keeping this really simple. There'd, there'd be more complex mechanics to this, but I want to keep it somewhat simple because you know, like the head would come up and then settle back down again, but I want to just, I don't want to overcomplicate it for, for what we're doing here. And we're, there's... You can you can simplify the mechanics and still have it feel pretty nice, pretty naturalistic. And that's what we're doing here. <clears throat> Those cheeks are going to start to settle in. Melody is starting to slow down, coming up. And I'll let the ears catch up. Here, I'm going to have him put his foot right down. Feel that? See the foot settles down there? So as that foot settles, I'm going to start to pick this one up. Just like so. See that the paws are changing. I'm just going to start to bring the back end up too. There we go. So if we play this. Shrink that up a little bit. You can start to see him settle into that pose. Let's pause it. Jump to the end. Jump to our, our second to the last drawing. We're going to add a frame. We can get that in between in there. We're almost there. In just over an hour, you can animate a, a fun little shot. Here you can see our in-betweens are starting to get tighter. I want to be a bit more careful. There we go. So you can see how he's settling into that pose, getting those in-betweens in there. Let me get that, get the neck in there.
there. Now is I'm just going to have that foot taking the full weight now. Is that foot coming forward? Actually, it's probably a little high. I don't need to bring it up that high. Bring the foot like in here. There we go. Now it's all about everything just kind of settling in. We got to get everything to settle in. like that. See there? It settles right in. Go ahead and add a frame. There we go. See, now we can uh, get a little bit more careful towards the end, making sure those those in-betweens are more accurate. See, there on the face. want to make sure that's accurate. The ears are settling in. Everything's moving in the way I want it to. There we go. So be our last drawing. So this is all going to be about just getting this foot to settle in. Like that. See that places the foot. That foot settles down. And we'll bring the back end up. Yeah. There we go. Let's hit play. So now, with just a little bit of timing change, we can get him to settle right into his little pose there. Let's do that. Let's get into the timing. Okay, so I'm going to go into settings right now. Throughout this, we've been playing at 15 frames per second. I'm actually used to 24 frames per second. So I'm going to go and shoot this up to 24. Now, what you're going to see is if I play this back now, it's going to play really fast way faster than we want it to. So I'm going to, I have to go in and I have to add some time to each frame in order for it to play back at the right rate. And if we had time, then that would allow me to go in and add drawings in between frames to smooth out the action. But let's see, let's start, let's go back to the beginning. Let's double tap. We're going to double tap on our, on our uh, first drawing. And I want it to hold for a little while. I want it to hold for let's say 48 frames or yeah 48 right there so that's two seconds we're playing we're playing at 24 frames per second so we're going to hold for two seconds before we actually do anything all right so now we're going to go to the next frame so now i have to jump ahead 48 frames because it's being held for 48 frames there we go now let's go to our next drawing now I want to hold that. I'm going to hold that for, oh, let's say six, because he's really gathering his momentum. Now we're going to go to our next frame. 
going to hold that for four. I'm going to go to our next frame. There's nothing there. I'm going to delete that frame. But here, I'm going to hold this one for two frames. I want it to go by really quick. With animation at 24 frames per second, which is the, is the frame rate for a film camera when you're watching a movie before we went digital, um, the frame rate is 24 frames per second, which means when you watch movies like The Lion King and Beauty and the Beast, we were doing a different drawing if we had fast action for every frame. That's 24, frame, uh, 24 drawings to make one second of film. But we discovered that if you were doing things that weren't fast action, we could get away with doing one drawing for every two frames. So we never got away with doing any less than 12 drawings per second. But And sometimes we had to do up to, up to 24. So I'm going to double tap this one. I'm going to bring that one up to two frames as well. And we're going to bring this one up to two frames. This one, I want to bring it up to four frames. I want it to kind of hang in the air. This will play at two frames. Two frames. And the thing is, you want to get, you know, texture in your timing, we always call it. You know, when you when you hit the peak of a of an arc like we just did, that's why I, I added you know four frames. I want it to hang a little bit. We keep this at two frames. Then once that bottom hits right there, he's gathering his, his momentum. I might be able to get away with four frames here. Now I'm going to go back to two frames. Go back to two frames right here. Where, where the action speeds up, that's where I want to have less and less frames. Two frames. We might find that this is too slow. I might find that I need to go back and slow some areas down or speed some areas up. I'm going to keep this one at two. Let's try this one at four. Put that at two. Two, 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 right there. Let's put this one on for three, just to throw an, an odd three in there. Let's do that. I'll put these in for three. Normally, I'll try to avoid threes because they're hard to in between, but in this case, I think we're going to go with it. So here, let's go for four. So here, I'm going to go for six, right there. And then here, let's go for 24. Our final, our final uh, pose. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit play and see what we get here. Boom, boom. So now you can see that plays a lot better with the timing adjusted. You can feel the weight a little better and he settles into his little pose. But you can see this was a lot of fun, just taking about an hour, hour and a half and sitting here and just playing with our little, our uh, Procreate, playing with a character in Procreate, in this case our Snow Bear character, jumping around. Okay, so we've done the playback, and so now we want to add a background, but I don't want to change the timing. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and double tap on my first drawing, and I'm going to duplicate it. So now I have two of the same. So now I can just go back to that first drawing, and I can erase it. 
just like so. I'm going to erase that drawing. Let's make a bigger eraser. There we go. Get rid of that. Get rid of it all together. And I'm going to draw. Let's just make it a very simple got a little horizon line. I want to get a little depth in it, so I might add a little bit of perspective. So you can see there's kind of a checkerboard uh, of pattern right there for his background. So now I can double click on this and hit background and that becomes, that's going to be held and it'll become the background. So watch if I play back, we have our character moving around on a background. You are able to add layers to opaque him so you can't see through him if you want to do that down the road. But, um, but I thought, you know, this is, this is a nice basic uh, introduction into how to do some animation. I just wanted to center him a little bit and procreate. It's a lot of fun. I, I like I said, I think this is uh, for an introduction. You know, for for a young animator wanting to start out, I think this is a wonderful piece of software to start animating in and really get a sense of timing. All the experimentation that you can do in here, I think, is is you're going to really learn a lot. So I really recommend getting in there and remembering your arcs, remembering your timing. Think about all those different things that really make animation dynamic and uh, and get in there and experiment with it. Have some fun with it. And remember, like I said, I've got full courses on my uh, on my site at CreatureArtTeacher.com on how to animate, how to do character design, um, uh, procreate itself. We've got all kinds of stuff. I really recommend you checking it out. So go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and uh, you can get help there. All right, and so the last thing I want to show you really quick is how to export this. So going up to your little mechanical tool here, and uh, right here, click on Share. And if you go down, you can see all kinds of uh, formats to export in. And right here, I want to animate MP4. And so I can export that, and boom, we've got the MP4 right there. All I have to do is hit Export, and it is exporting right now. So there you go. There you have it. It's animating in Procreate. It's awesome. I love it. If you're just starting out in animation, this is the perfect software for you. Give it a try uh, and have fun with it. That's the most important thing. Animation is meant to be fun. Don't get hung up on it, especially if you're young. At this stage, really just have fun with it and experiment. Have a ball. You know, don't get frustrated. Just have fun and learn. I remember when I was a young animator, it took so much time just to sit there and I'd get so frustrated. But you want to just take your time and ease into it and have fun with it. So there you go. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody at Procreate for having me here. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. And uh, I hope everybody at Lightbox is having a great time. I'm, I wish we could all be together, but this is the next best thing. So anyway, I hope you learned something today. today. Go on out there, put some beauty back into the world, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.